What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC. Today we're going to be taking a look at a vintage advertising knife lot that I purchased. I don't know a ton about these knives, so not going to be super informative in that regard, but some really cool recognizable brands on the other side of those covers, and these are still super old knives, so it should be an interesting video. Now, the one thing I do know about these knives is that they all came from the same private collection. First time I saw it at the shop, there was about 20 of them. They were inside a cigar box, all individually wrapped in wax paper. Didn't purchase them at the time. I went back the next week, about half of them had sold off, but I was still able to pick out a bunch of great brands. And I think all of these brands are gonna be things that most people will recognize. So let's get into it. I did get some additional information doing some research post-purchase and I'll share that as we go through it, but still not a ton of information. So if you do have additional context to any of these, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Would definitely appreciate it. We're gonna start with this one in the middle. This one has the Cadillac logo on it. Now, of course, these advertising knives aren't gonna be made by the brand that's showing on those covers. They're gonna be made by a knife manufacturer. This one doesn't have any indication of who that manufacturer is. I did share a picture of it with some of the guys. Martin over at Steel City Knives speculated that it may have been made by a Colonial Knife Company and just because it looks similar to some he's seen from them. So as good a guess as any, but that's definitely just speculation. So if you know, again, definitely feel free to correct that down in the comments. Now, all of these are pretty similar in sizing, three and a half inches in the closed position. The main difference is gonna be the thickness because some of these are single layer and some are double layer. So this version is a single layer, which all of the single layers have a clip point blade. No half stop on this one. And it's about two and a half inches. So our overall length is just around six inches in total. Now, as I mentioned, no branding from the manufacturer. So we do have a USA Tang stamp, but flipping over to the other side, no indicator of who might have made this one. Now, was really excited about this Cadillac one for a couple reasons. It's a super prestigious and recognizable brand with a lot of history. And that's something you look for when you're looking for old advertisement stuff, not just knives. I'm really into vintage ads. So things like lighters and pens, even some old magazines that I've take cut out pages and framed some old advertisements that I thought were pretty cool. So definitely something you're looking for is that recognizable brand and the more prestigious, the better. The other thing you kind of look for, which we don't have too many examples of in the ones we're going to see today, are just brands that you have a personal history with that maybe have more value to you because of that personal history than someone else that it's not as recognizable of a brand. But this case, very recognizable brand. The other reason I was excited about it though, is with car companies, they go through different iterations of that logo and just like the case tank stamp you can sort of use it to date the logo and so it's not going to be as accurate as the case tank stamp because obviously they don't give us a dot system to tell us what year it was made but at least it gets you in the general bar ballpark when that logo was used what year range and so this one's a really cool one i love the green on here as well it just contrasts really well with the white covers should note these are not bone it's some sort of plasticky material and it feels similar to like a victorinox scale so definitely not bone on these but the green looks great with the white and the logo is somewhat recognizable obviously being that it's just Cadillac in cursive but one that I wasn't super familiar with but I knew I would be able to get a general sense of when they use that logo and in this case it's actually very very specific I said you can't get a specific year in this case you can so Cadillac has used about 30 logos over the last 100 years. Every single one of them has the coat of arms in it, except this one. And so this one was introduced in 1914. By 1915, they had redesigned it and had the coat of arms reintroduced. And so I'm guessing because it didn't have the coat of arms, that's why it didn't last very long. So most of the other logo iterations lasted five to 15 years. This one only lasted a single year, which was 1914. So really great in the sense of dating the logo, but a little bit of a red flag for the knife because although this is an older knife, very clearly, it's probably 40 years old, not 100 years old. It's definitely not that old. And so if this were a sample given to Cadillac to just kind of show what they could do, or if they purchased them to give out in their shops or at their dealerships, they would have almost certainly used the current day logo. If they didn't use the current day logo, they would have went with something a little bit more recognizable, something iconic, maybe even the first logo. This isn't either of those. It only lasts a year. Most people haven't seen this version of it. And so I think it's very unlikely that this was actually ever a true advertising knife, even if it was 
originally made for that. And so I also think it's unlikely that this was a licensed product either, but still really great information. And the next knife that we're gonna see gives us a little bit more information on when these knives might have been manufactured. So we're gonna move on to this yellow one in the top corner here. And this one is the World Fair Chicago 1933 with the Mickey Mouse logo on there. Really cool one. This one I was super excited about, probably the most excited about, still am to be honest. And this one is another red flag once I did a little bit more of my research about when these were manufactured. And so before we get into that, we have two blades. We have our clip point style blade and same USA stamp there, but nothing on the back. And then we have the pen blade, which is about a 1.75, kind of a Warncliffe style blade actually, but 1.75 inches on that one. And so the reason this one's more of a red flag is there's a lot of research behind this. These got kind of popular in the 70s and so people started doing their research and there's a list of merchandise that they sold at the World Fair in Chicago which was only there in 1933 and 1934 and so pretty small window and they had a list of merchandise and advertisement knives were not one of them. The other thing that they were able to cross-reference is Disney branded products. Disney is obviously very protective of their trademarks and they did not license any sort of knife during that time period. And so this was not produced in 1933, but it still does give us a lot of information because it did start to circulate in the 70s. And there was a company called Taylor Cutlery that made a white version with a Mickey on there with red pants that was pretty popular. That one has a China stamp. And so that one got pretty popular. This was another variation that circulated in the 70s. Still don't know what brand made it. There's none of that information on any of the auction sites that sold these. And this one, despite not being a real Disney product, despite not being from 1933 and kind of being misrepresented, actually has some decent collector's value. And these, they, I could probably sell this one and recoup all of the funds from all of the ones that I purchased. I didn't pay a lot for these. It was a pretty cheap lot, but could probably recoup the funds, even though it's not a real World Fair Chicago knife and not a real Disney branded advertisement knife either, but still a really cool one with these yellow covers. This is the most valuable version that I've seen with the yellow covers the white one with the color animation on there is a little bit cheaper this one also uses a little bit more kind of retro looking mickey although this is also a mickey style that wasn't in existence yet in existence yet in 1933 which is kind of funny didn't do their research on that although a lot harder to do back in the 70s with no internet so next up we have this one this is probably one where it was more of just kind of a knife that I identified with, but the Smith & Wesson branding looks great on here. That blue is excellent on those white covers. Single blade on this one. This one actually has a half stop and a sharpening tool though. Again, no indication of the steel, the manufacturer, anything like that, but exact same construction and feel to these knives, all the same dimensions as well. But that Smith & Wesson one's really cool. Actually, one of my earliest knives was a Smith & Wesson folding locking knife. It's this like cheap little law enforcement knife with serrations and I still have that knife and so I thought this one was really cool when I came across it which is why it was one of the ones I chose to add. Now two more and not really any extra information on these but we'll do the yellow one first. So we have the Coca-Cola five cents at all fountains which is a really cool one. Another two layer with the clip point and that worn clip blade and then another Coca-Cola in the white and red Kind of a little bit more iconic with the white and red. Originally, when I saw the collection, he had a red version with black text, and I really wish I would have gotten that one as well, but it had already sold by the time I went back. But still, all really cool knives, even though these were made in the 70s, and the fact that I'm almost positive the Cadillac and obviously know for sure that the World Fair Chicago ones aren't actually advertisement knives, that probably indicates that the others aren't either, but they're still pretty old knives. There's definitely some collector value to them. A lot less for the non-World Fair ones. I think I was able to find the other World Fair one that was the Taylor Cutlery made in China. That one's selling for like 10 bucks or so, but these ones go for a decent bit more, but there's still a collector value to them. They're still old vintage knives, and I think they're just kind of fun to collect. So definitely going to be on the lookout for more. In fact, I have some plans to go antiquing with my wife. She's looking for some other vintage watches, and so I'm check out and see if I can find any more of these old advertising knives. 
Definitely let me know what you think of them though down in the comments below. Again, if you have any additional information, I would love that information. I always like learning more about the knives in my collection, especially these super old knives. But appreciate everyone who tuned in. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, joining the channel as a member, or even checking out some of my other videos. I'll help the channel out a ton. And as always, I hope you have a great one. Take care.